Lessons uh, learned, you know, uh, from this pandemic. I think all, all hoteliers uh, should have learned uh, several things from this pandemic. One is uh, react quickly. You know, no time to wait. When, when there is issues, you need to cut costs and, and react quickly to preserve capital. On a going forward basis, all hoteliers should always look at maintaining a good working capital ba balance. And alongside with a good working capital balance, I would say you need to make sure that when you are doing the capital stack between debt and capital, that you organize yourself and you structure the capital stack the right way with the proper maturity, amortization levels, covenants, and, and so on. That's key to have the right capital stack, not to be over levered and not to have covenants in the loans that can come back to haunt you later on. And then, you know, when you're doing the debt structuring, you know, if you're doing a CMBS loan, which is a very strict loan terms, really pay attention, dedicate a lot of time to negotiating those loan terms because once you close, they're written in stone. And if dealing with banks, make sure that you create a good relationship uh, at, at, at the end of the day, you know, you really need to have your bankers be your friends so that in times like this, you can sit down and talk to them and negotiate with them and, and for them to give you the time of day to understand what you're going through and to work with you. So uh, keep close ties with the bankers, uh, keep an open line of communication. Those should be all the lessons, you know, some of the lessons learned from all hoteliers in situations like this. Otherwise, uh, you can find yourself in, in trouble. Our hotel industry has a reputation for evolving during times of a crisis. And uh, we certainly have a crisis to evolve through with this one. And we're seeing that through different ways of innovation, different approaches to getting work done, different models of efficiency that is having a direct impact on our clients, on our guests, and our employees alike. There's a couple of takeaways that I think may be transformative as to how we do things as we move forward. I'd like to address a couple of them. First is communication. Uh, always been important, but boy, if we had to change the way we communicate, both internally to our team members, as well as externally, in our case, to our clients. Internally, we've had to adopt to a work from home environment. It was a big change for us because our company culture was always such that we worked very closely together in a very hands-on teams approach. So working remotely necessitated a number of changes. One is to provide everybody the tools that they needed to be able to work remotely. And two, how to stay connected with them. And we found through technology, uh, specifically in our case, Teams and uh, Yammer, they were effective for us to stay connected as a group and still feel as if we were part of a company and could share that company culture. From a client standpoint, we had to adopt to just the frequency of communication and what that communication looked like. The old tools that we had before, the old templates and report models, we had to put those to the wayside because we were in an environment where the world had changed and changed dramatically overnight. And of course, we thought this was a two week, maybe two month situation. Now we're six months looking at this for extending into a year. So some of these changes that we've had to do as it relates to our client communication needed to be thoughtful and needed to be customized to make sure that each client was getting the information on a timely basis that met their needs and requirements. I think another area that we had to focus on was some of the sources of this information that we were getting weren't the same traditional sources that we historically got. Looking at, uh, at, at, at old industry benchmarks when you have hotels out of inventory maybe permanently or at least uh, suspended operations, or where you're trying to benchmark now a financial statement that looks like a TSO model, temporary suspension of operations, or a low occupancy model. There aren't a lot of industry benchmarks to use to do that. Fortunately, over the last four or five years, our company developed and, and committed to a very robust business, business intelligence uh, database program. And not for that, I think we would have been lost, but our BI system worked and worked very effectively such that we could do internal benchmarking across our portfolio of hotels that allowed us to measure different levels 
of operations, whether suspended, whether low occupancy, or whatever the situation might warrant. So with that database, we were able to provide strategic thinking and focused client communications that addressed the very challenges that we were going through in our, in our hotel industry. As it stands now, we're, we're ready for this budgeting season. It'll be unlike any that we've ever gone through before. Uh, but again, with all the changes that we've made internally, I think we're prepared to deal with that and of course the recovery in 2021. You know, there's many lessons that have uh, been learned by hoteliers in this downturn. Uh, several that come to mind. First off is use of CMBS debt. Uh, now that uh, that uh, borrowers are having to go to special servicers to modify loans, they're finding that there's much more of a reluctance to a special servicer to modify a loan than a bank or insurance company or other type of uh, traditional lender. This is because of the complications in the CMBS uh, trust structure. Another matter that many hoteliers uh, face and uh, a lesson learned is the dependency on segments and markets that are reliant on uh, air travel, uh, guests arriving uh, by uh, air transit. And so now what's in vogue is to uh, focus on those segments that are drive to markets because of just fear of flying at this point. And so uh, lesson learned is uh, to shift dependency uh, on, on segments that are less air transit reliant and more um, uh, drive to. That's both business and leisure travel. Another lesson learned is uh, the insurance uh, policies. And what, uh, what has been learned is that unless a pandemic uh, situation, a pandemic and government closures associated with a pandemic are specifically addressed in an insurance policy, then chances are pretty good that the uh, insurance policy has an out to cover uh, these pandemic related uh, losses. This could be both casualty policy, uh, property casualty policies, as well as business interruption. And of course, this is being litigated in the courts and we'll see how, what the outcome would be. But the lesson learned is to make sure that there's specific language to identify uh, this issue in insurance policies. Another matter is use of technology. And uh, it's no longer uh, just an option. It's an absolute must to have the latest technology. Hoteliers have learned this the hard way that um, now there's a big cost associated with uh, catching up to be, be having touchless interactions uh, by guests for check-in, for food ordering, for all kinds of services, for billing, collections, you name it. And uh, the hotels, many hotels just weren't caught up on, on the latest technology. And so now they have to catch up, otherwise they will not have guests. Guests are looking for protection as much uh, interaction, human interaction, less as they can. Uh, another lesson learned is about uh, leveraging of hotels and uh, the, the matter once again of over leveraging, where maybe there was a conservative senior debt, but layering in MES debt brought the uh, debt, the debt portion of the capital stack as high as 80 or 85 percent. And so many of those hoteliers now they're forced to turn the keys back to the lenders because there's just not, a, not enough equity left in the deal based on the way the market is downturned to realistically uh, preserve or, or recover their equity. And then uh, finally, just the overreaction generally to the COVID-19 pandemic. You know, many hotels may have been too quick to close down or not quick enough um, and uh, just there's been overreaction in, in both directions, and it really required a more careful study of, of why to close down, what are the cost benefits, and more importantly, if you are closing down, then what it's going to take to reopen. Uh, now to reopen, I mean, just, just the pre-opening budget to reopen some of these hotels now is just uh, uh, astronomical, just like uh, building and opening a brand new hotel. So many lessons learned and uh, hopefully uh, these mistakes or these lessons will come to play in the future.